Hey guys, welcome. My name's Jennifer with Moreau Family Farm. Spring is right around the corner, and something that you guys don't know about me is I aspire to be a master gardener one day. I am not there. I am not even close to being there. But hopefully one day in the future, I will have this whole gardening thing down pat. Typically when I start gardening, I always get a late start on everything. The only thing that I tend to grow is cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, a little bit of summer squash, green beans, and that's kind of it. I really have not been successful at growing lettuce or cabbage or broccoli or cauliflower or all of those other vegetables. For some reason, I'm just not good at it. So I definitely have to do some more research, more trial and error, different ways of trying things out. I'm in Northeast Alabama, so we are in 7B and I should be able to grow quite a bit of food. I'm going to show you guys where I'm gonna grow a lot of the food, and then I'll show you the new area um, and what I'm gonna do. I still have to clean up a lot of this area. It's a pretty decent size triangular section. I grow my cucumbers up against the, the fence here, and I will do Maybe some more cucumbers along this fence. This fence here, I'll have green beans. They seem to grow well there. And the tomatoes do pretty good around here and the peppers. I'm gonna keep that like that because that has been successful. As you can see, there is some shady areas over there. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning and we have a ton of trees. We don't have a whole lot of area that has direct sun. Last year I opened up another area which is on the other side of that fence. You can see everything's kind of a mess. I have all my my pots out and this is mint that actually lasted all through the winter. I'm surprised it didn't die down. This is going to be my my strawberry section here you can see that the strawberry uh, I don't know if you can see that or not yeah so the leaves are already starting to pop up a little bit those are from last year they grow kind of wildly like over in this area as well but there should be a decent amount of strawberries in this section and I am going to try to plant some more this year this area, I usually keep this for my herbs, like my oregano and basil, and I'm going to grow, I believe cilantro is a more of a colder weather. Because it's still kind of cool out, it's like 60 something degrees today, and it is still February, so I'm going to try to see if I can grow a little bit of cilantro up in the front here, but oregano, parsley, and basil, those are the herbs that I use the most. So that's what I'm going to keep in this section. All of the areas there, like along the back side of the house and over there, I cannot plant anything. We have termite control stuff in the ground over there, so I really can't plant over there, unfortunately, or else I would. But what I will be planting over there, or things that are going to regrow from last year, is going to be flowers and be, you know, just pollinators. So. In this area over here, these are some really nice pollinators here and also over there. I don't know if you can see there's some greenery popping up over there. But these are irises. But also back here in this corner, there's a wildflower that has 
um, it's tall and it has purple flowers on that. That's going to grow up in the back there and then some more irises in the front here. This is a clematis vine that's going to grow here. So we'll definitely get a lot of um, bees and butterflies. They're going to come over here. This is another pollinator here, but I cannot remember the type of bush that this is. Also over here, we're gonna have the rose bush here, so there's gonna be some roses. And also echinacea grows over here as well. Then over, over here on this vine, this is a firecracker bush. And another thing that we have that's an excellent pollinator that comes through here are hummingbirds. We have a ton of hummingbirds that love this um, firecracker bush or vine and it grows on this also. And this pot here, which was already here when we had purchased the home, um, this pot has this weird vine that grows on this dead tree here. And we've been reluctant to take down the tree because this tree also helps with the um, those wood burrowing bees. What are they called? I can't think of the name of them. It'll come to me a little bit later. But anyways, that vine that goes up the tree has some really beautiful flowers that grows on that as well that attracts a lot of the bees and the birds and the butterflies and stuff. Even though this is the ugliest dead tree ever and it's not going to grow any leaves or anything like that when spring comes back, it is really great for those bees to not burrow on our house. One day I'm going to do a video and you're going to look at this pond and you're going to be wowed. That's a whole nother story on that and when we're going to get that started, I have absolutely no idea. But then all of the little critters that were in the pond are all in this <laughs> tote that we had cut in half. Um, yeah, it's, it's a funny story. And then this lady here, actually when we moved in, this whole area here was completely just bushes everywhere all along the fence line, all the way in the very back there. This was all bushes in through here. So we had cleaned all of this out. Um, these are all irises and lilies and stuff that grow in through here. So this tree right here that looks like it's dead will actually come back in the spring. And it's a type of hydrangea. You can see there's a lot of dead flowers and stuff like that but it has really pretty white flowers when it blooms and it blooms pretty much all spring and summer long over the winter my husband tried to grow some lettuce and stuff like that or some brassicas but nothing took off so i'm not quite sure what happened we do have some lemon balm that lasted throughout the winter you can see it right there and also there's some more lemon balm right there. I had a gardenia right there that died. I don't think it's going to come back, but we'll see. On the outside, don't mind the mess. We still have Christmas lights up that I've been debating on if I want to keep them in my garden area because once, once springtime comes, everything in there looks really pretty, but right now everything just looks really drab. Beds here on the outside. I normally just do sunflowers all the way over so that's most likely that's what I'm gonna do again this year because I just really love it when the sunflowers are growing out here this is a giant blueberry bush and over here is another blueberry bush we get a ridiculous amount of blueberries during the springtime which is amazing we have over in this area, I call this my orchard. It is a peach tree, so hopefully it'll do a little bit better this year. This is an apple tree that obviously looks like it's on its deathbed, and we will probably be removing this this year because we did not get um, any good apples from it last year. This is another blueberry bush. 
blueberry bush right here. Another blueberry right here. And another blueberry right here, which all do pretty well. This is a not doing so great. I think I don't know if this one's the raspberry or the blackberry that I had planted, but this one's a raspberry or blackberry, and this over here is another raspberry or blackberry, and both of them died. So gonna have to pull those up. This is a cherry tree. This is another cherry tree. This is an apple tree. This is also an apple tree that it doesn't look very healthy and it it really isn't healthy, but we'll see how it does this year. This is going to be the last year that we let it try to do much of anything. Um, the apples that I did get from it, I, I did save them and I canned them for like apple pies and stuff like that. But as far as eating them raw, uh, didn't really care for them. They were kind of just didn't have a good sweetness to them. This is a pear tree, another pear tree, and another apple tree that you can see the goats have gotten to but it should still do well so we will start fertilizing these and putting more manure down on the bottom side hey boys hi boys oh look at you so handsome with your hair blowing in the wind duck ducks i always call them duck ducks but i really don't know his name that's why i call them duck ducks but my goal really for today is just to kind of get organized. So I'm gonna go through my seeds. I'm getting started to get my garden going and that is very exciting to me. So you guys, I'm gonna tell you something you should never do. Never leave your seeds unattended. I put them on the ledge here and then of course started talking to you guys. And I just came back here and my dog had ripped through my, oh man, she got through my green beans. What a mess. So anyways, I'm holding these carefully, but we might get some surprise things growing in an area that doesn't typically have vegetables. It's usually just flowers. She's chewing on a green bean seed Oh, my little girl. This whole area up here usually has a lot of flowers. I'm gonna try to get some more planted this year. I don't think you guys have been in here before. This is my shed slash gardening area. We keep the animals winter food in here as well it is a mess everything is kind of just a mess during the winter i don't like to get out of the house much because it's so cold and i am a florida girl and i don't do great with cold weather i don't do horrible i just don't get out much during the winter so i keep most of my seeds in this little basket oh let me tell you a little story about this shed so the walls are charcoal black but half of it had burnt down. So one of the things in the future, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint and clean this up and one day it's gonna look really nice. The windows are all broke. Yes, we have windows, but as you can see, they're not in the best shape, but it's all right, it's a shed, so it's not that big of a deal. I got this last year and really never had a chance to use it. I think I got it around fall. Anyways, my seeds are in here. I've got extra boxes of stuff that I don't know what's in them. I'm gonna be working on cleaning this up today. Under pressure, no more time. Can we make a move? Overthinking, you and I. 
I start seeds probably around the end of March beginning of April so with it being just a couple weeks into February I still have a good jump on things but as you can see I'm starting to pick some stuff up I've emptied all of the pots that I had um there's still a lot like you can see there's still dirt in here and you can see I have all of my seeds separated so these are all the vegetables that I'm going to plant this year. And I have a couple different varieties of tomatoes, some carrots, some pumpkin for a little bit later on in the season, Brussels sprouts, um, some broccoli and cauliflower, green beans, long beans, purple beans, some summer squash and zucchini, some spinach, different types of lettuces, arugula, some sweet peppers, um, a few onions that could be grown and my herbs. I noticed that I only have one package of cucumbers so I need to get another couple packages of cucumbers. I want to get some small pickling cucumbers but also some nice slicing cucumbers as well. Um, I have about how many of these trays? I think I have um, either five or eight of these trees so I'm gonna use the majority of these to get things started and then I'm gonna use some of these smaller pots because I always save all of my pots whenever I buy a plant or something like that I want to be able to be a gardener from the beginning to the end from planting the seed and having it grow and sprout and you know, than to harvesting it. Now that is my goal this year to be more of a self-sufficient kind of gardener without relying on the bigger stores. So if you guys can give me any tips, pointers, tricks, if you're a good gardener and you get things to grow well, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. So, uh, I don't know. It's a learning curve. I'm trying to get better at it. So this is the dirt that I have from all of the pots that I've emptied so far. Break all of the bigger pieces up and then I have a sifter. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift through it and get out some of those bigger pieces and I know there's some like little um, pebbles in there as well. Top of my little well. I still have all of those pots to go through. That's going to be next after I finish sweeping this shed out. I'm going to go start working on that. We are supposed to get a ton of rain on Thursday. I have to get a lot of stuff done, but it is supposed to stay warm. So that is a good thing. Um, the other area that I wanted to show you guys that I'm going to start working on. It is, like I said, it's around 1130-ish, somewhere around there. The sun rises over on that area, sets, obviously to the west over here so it gets full sun pretty much all day long. I have decided after doing a little bit of research that I'm going to use these straw bales over in this area here that I said I was going to do the new area of our garden. So since I already have the cardboard down that's a great start for these bales and I'm just going to line them up the way that I want them. That way they're not too heavy to move afterwards.
Okay, for now I think that's how I want it. That's how it's gonna be. Um, I do have extra cardboard down, as you can see. So, I went like a few inches in on the sides and also away from the wall. I don't want it up against the wall. Um, this cardboard's out a good, you know, two and a half feet or so in most areas, not all areas, but there's a little patch missing there because I had to use it. But this is pretty much what it's going to be like. I'm going to get some fertilizer on here, um, fertilize them, water them, stuff like that. And then after they're fertilized the way that they need to be, which I think they're already starting to be fertilized because of the fact that the grass is now regrowing in it. So I think as far as um, Joel Canton, I think is his name, um, the way that he does his process is he has to fertilize a long period of time. But because these have been sitting for so long, they're already starting to fertilize and decompose in the inside. I'm putting it on top of the cardboard. That way there's less weeds and stuff that come up in through the bales so that's a good thing that i already had enough of the cardboard down already and then once i feel like it's fertilized enough then i'm going to put like about an inch or two of dirt on the top of them um kind of like in maybe a 12 inch span of dirt about one to two inches thick and then i'm going to start my seeds in that dirt but it is going to take a process it's not done overnight I want to make sure that these bales are really um, fertilized before I start putting that dirt on top of it and stuff. Now the dirt that I'm going to be putting on is a, it's high compost, it has a lot of manure, it has um, worms in it already and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good stuff going on in this compost that I'm going to be putting on the top of this. It also has, um, not only does it have cow manure, it has chicken manure, it has pig manure, and it has goat manure. So it has a bunch of different manures inside this compost. So it's going to be really good for these vegetables. So hopefully this year is going to be a really good year for growing, especially since now I have it in an area that has direct sunlight pretty much most of the day. But I'm, I'm excited to see how these bales do this year now these will decompose so it's not something that we're going to be able to use again next year but we got these bales from our neighbor down the road so if he continues to give us his bales every year which he gave us his last year as well then we won't have to buy bales every year which is kind of cool you have some like neighbors you see in the front of their house that they have like those nice little uh, you know decorative things out in the front of their house with bales then you know, ask them if they're going to be throwing them away. Ask them if you can have them so you can grow some of your own food. Another thing, of course, that you want to consider whenever you're growing anything is going to be your water. You want to make sure that you have a water source close by or an easy way to get water to where you need it to go. So on the other side of this pool house, and just so you know, we call this a pool house because there is a pool inside this house, but like rocks and stuff in the inside of it and covered it with plywood so it's unfortunate so if you hear me say the pool house I'm talking about this big long building that we have here um so I don't know if you can see this but there's a barrel and it runs to the drainage and it just needs to have a hose connected here and there's pipes down here on the bottom so I think it would be okay to like start filling this area with water and use this as one of the water sources to water our garden over here. But something else that we have that is um, something that we can use is there is a hose over on this side. The only thing, the hose over here, the pressure is not that good. There's a spigot over here against the wall and that spigot is how we feed our ducks and our pigs and also our goats. But like I said, the water pressure that comes from this is very, very low water pressure. So inside this building, there is a bathroom on this back side of the wall. So there is a water source inside. If we need to figure out a way, my husband has done plumbing in the past. So if there's a way that we need to put another water spigot over on this side we could easily do that 
the water in this building has good pressure so I'm not really sure why the pressure isn't good on the other side so because I know that these bales are already slightly fertilized I'm gonna be putting some all-purpose fertilizer this is just um, 10 10 10 I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the top it's not quite what you're supposed to do but I think it'll be okay only because it's already started the fertilizing process um, and I'll just kind of try it out see how it does we have a really good thunderstorm that's going to be here tomorrow so I figure if I get this on here and situated today I'll be good to go I'm also going to throw some of the same fertilizer in the dirt that I have over here that I emptied out earlier just because I'm not going to be using it today I'm going to let the rain really saturate it let this fertilizer get in there really good before I start putting it into the seed starter I'm also going to throw the fertilizer and through this area that I do a lot of my other gardening, the stuff that I keep close to the house. So I'll be doing tomatoes and cucumbers and squash and stuff over there, whatever I can get over there. But I'm also going to do that kind of stuff over here because those are the vegetables that I eat the most of. So I want to keep that close to the house where I can just kind of go outside and pick it. Definitely my herbs are going to be over on this side, not over there. All right, so I got everything fertilized. So I still have a half a bag left and um, I'll use this when things start to grow. Well guys, that's pretty much it for today. I will keep you guys informed on what's going on with the growing process, how things are coming along. I have not, like I said, I have not got seeds in the dirt yet, but hopefully, um, Hopefully by this weekend, I'll get some seeds in the dirt, get some stuff started, but I really want this dirt to get fertilized and get really rich and healthy before I start adding um, some seeds to it. So it's a process, but things are coming along. I finally got my hands in the dirt, so it feels good. The weather is phenomenal. Right now it's a little overcast, but it's been sunny all day in the high 60s, probably low 70s. That's really it. Thank you guys so much for watching this today. Hopefully you guys can learn from some of my mistakes or learn something that I learned that's new, like growing in the, the straw bales. That's new for me and hopefully that takes off really well. So if it works for me, it can work for you. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Share with your friends and family. We're trying to grow our channel and we greatly appreciate you guys helping us out. And until next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.